welcome to Struggles of the Spirit. I'm Bonnie Douglas, Reverend Lee Udell's assistant. Lee is beginning to feel like him, so his old self again, and he's gaining more and more strength and is even beginning his plan to return to Struggles of the Spirit. Today's pre-recorded show is called A Big Year for Little Birds. Ernie Franzgrot, a gentleman who is a great bird enthusiast, but particularly fond of hummingbirds, he lives in Shoreham, Vermont, set a goal for himself in the year 2000 to find 200 species of hummingbirds. He traveled throughout the United States and several South American countries, and he found 204 species. This tape today, this um, uh, show today, is about 90, um, approximately 90 of those species of birds uh, going about their daily uh, uh, chores, their daily lives um, in their natural habitats, um, uh, during feeding, uh, taking care of their babies, and um, just living the life of a beautiful jeweled bird. Please remember that there is a website here at the uh, studio that you can send remarks, comments, questions uh, to, and uh, Reverend Udell and I will be back to you, get back to you with um, um, res proper responses. Enjoy the show. Thank you. The big year began in the equatorial Andes, in the heart of hummingbird diversity. So let us begin with some diverse hummingbirds. At a total length of 10 inches, the black-tailed train bearer is the longest of the South American hummingbirds. The wood stars are among the shortest. This one, perched on a flower bud, is less than three inches long. This species has the shortest of all hummingbird bills, one-fifth of an inch. And this one has the longest, up to four and one-half inches. The yellow pollen at the base of her bill shows that she has been feeding at flowers that are at least four inches long. Ecuador has 130 species of hummingbirds, many of great elegance and grace. and to many with a rainbow of iridescent colors. The males display their long tails and other adornments in territorial disputes and during courtship This tiny female wood star is nearly as beautiful as the male. Here, a lance bill flies out from perches to catch insects over a river. Some, but not all of the insects you see here are potential food for this female racket tail.
Let's show that again slowly so we can see it. What the speckled hummingbird lacks in color, he makes up for in personality. In a week's time in Puerto Rico, you can see all of its five hummingbirds. Like the Caribbean Sea, this one is named after a fierce tribe of people who once lived in the Lesser Antilles. Aloe plants are native to Africa, but with some contortions, these American birds can reach the nectar. Two of the five species are found only in Puerto Rico. This is one. And this is the other. Here is a brand new nest. The female green mango is still adding material to it. And here is species number five. Brazil is larger than the continental United States. The birds you will see here are all from parts of eastern Brazil. The Brazilian ruby is named not for the color of its throat, but for its tail. The flower is a bromeliad. The amethyst wood star has the distinction of having the fastest measured wing beats of any bird, 80 in one second. This is the flower of a heliconia. The plant is a Sanchezia. Preening helps keep feathers ready for flight. The 
hermits have classy plumage and fascinating courtship and nesting behavior. And who can resist a coquette? Costa Rica is a favorite destination of ecotourists. In a country the size of West Virginia, there are more than 50 species of hummingbirds. Even in such a small country, there are a couple of species that occur only there. Notice how gray he is in front compared to the black-chested subspecies in Arizona. This is the favorite of many who visit Costa Rica. Gray-tailed and purple-throated mountain gems are often considered to be the same species, while the female of both looks like this. Many tropical hummingbirds sing complex songs. It's unusual to find a long-tailed hermit perched out in the open. Usually they stay in the deep forest. The males gather in courtship groups and sing all day long. A second hermit is singing nearby. Good song perches are hard to find. A hermit builds her nest on the underside of a long leaf, often that of a palm, fern, or heliconia. Here she settles down to brood her eggs. While hermits are lowland birds, 
The fiery-throated hummingbird is a bird of the mountains. This one was feeding at flowers at an elevation of 10,000 feet. If you look carefully, you may be able to see small creatures moving around on his face and bill. These are hummingbird flower mites that feed on the pollen and nectar of flowers. They aren't parasites, they just hitchhike on hummingbirds from flower to flower. He's called fiery-throated, and if you catch him at just the right angle, The magenta-throated wood star's nest has never been described in the scientific literature. Perhaps it's always located in inaccessible places, like this one, 50 feet above the ground in a cecropia tree. Apparently the nest contained two newly hatched babies. This hummer is one of the smallest in Central America. Females weigh a little over two grams. Less than a penny, more than a dime. When you're this small, you can take a bath in a leaf. We call it bathing, but hummingbirds like to get their feathers wet before preening. In this stream, several kinds of hummingbirds take dips in the pools. Somewhat larger than Texas, Venezuela has around 100 species of hummingbirds. This hummer lives on isolated table mountains in southeastern Venezuela and nearby Brazil, the so-called Tepui region. The violet-chested hummingbird is endemic to northern mountain ranges of Venezuela. Here it feeds at Heliconia.
Watch its bill for flower mites. For their size, they run as fast as a cheetah. This is a spectacular large hummingbird. It weighs as much as four ruby throats. These are banana flowers. Watch for the violet ears when he gets excited. Norantia flowers are visited by many hummingbirds. This hermit is feeding at flowers and then perching nearby. Hermits are not territorial, so why does it keep perching here? You may be surprised by what happens next. This is a young fledgling, already able to feed it flowers, but apparently not yet skilled enough to catch insects. Mother hummingbirds often feed their young for several weeks after they leave the nest. Back home for a while, we'll see a few hummers in Vermont, Colorado, and Arizona. Apple blossoms and the voices of robins and blue jays tell us it is spring in Vermont, and this hummingbird is a ruby throat. In Tucson, Arizona, this nest is built in a potted cactus. The young black chin is panting on this summer afternoon. In Portal, Arizona, 
A blue throat has built her nest on an electric wire. At first, she appears to be adding nesting material, but she's actually removing parts of the nest. It may be too close to the ceiling. This bird has raised two broods a year at this spot for seven years. Blue throats keep adding material on top of the old nest. You can see annual rings in this nest, which is at least six inches tall. This Mexican species is a rare visitor to Arizona, sought after by many birders who come here. We'll see just two hummingbirds here in a short visit to northeastern Mexico. Both of them have been rare visitors to the U.S. The plant is Echeveria, a succulent native to Mexico. Watch the bill again for flower mites here five times slower than actual speed. This tiny hummer is native to Mexico. It was observed once in Ramsey Canyon, Arizona, but that was back in 1896. This is the flower of a thistle. In June, it's mating season, and the males sing and display. This male with pollen on his bill is performing courtship displays. You will next see one of these displays, first shown three times at actual speed, then once at half speed with a pitch one octave lower. The whirring sound is his wings, the descending whistle his voice. Three of the four hummingbird species on the island of Jamaica occur only there. Hummingbirds have ten tail feathers. This one is temporarily missing three. Some of these hummers are 14 inches long. This is at the Rocklands Bird Sanctuary near Montego Bay. Just below the basket is a nest built not only in a potted plant, but in a potted plastic plant. 
A hurricane is passing just north of Jamaica on this day. Just off the northeastern coast of Venezuela, Trinidad harbors birds that are South American and not typical of the Caribbean. Note how it pierces the base of the Sanchezi flowers to get at the nectar. This hummer takes turns between singing and catching insects. You might even see a couple of the bugs he chases. He's fanning his tail to get it wet in the rain. And if it doesn't rain, there are other ways to get wet. He then flies to a perch across the canyon to preen his feathers. This is a female. When they leave the nest, young males resemble females. This young male is starting to grow his crest and cheek tufts, but this is just a crew cut and a five o'clock shadow compared to the feathers he will have as an adult. Eighteen species of hummingbirds are found only in Peru. 
Five of these will be seen next. This bird is feeding at an elevation of 14,000 feet. Again, look for flower mites on his bill. Some of these hummers have very limited ranges. The flower is Barnadesia. This lowland hermit is feeding at another kind of heliconia. I've seen this hummer hang by one foot from a flower, just looking around for a full minute. This species often pierces the base of flowers, like this Malva viscus or Turk's cap. This female coquette darts around so fast at vervain flowers that we'll have to watch her in slow motion. This pied tail is found from southern Colombia to northern Peru. The flowers are Bomaria. This gorgeous hummingbird, around seven inches long, is also a Peruvian endemic. It is feeding here at tree tobacco. A long, thin country, chilly stretches from the tropics in the north to within 700 miles of Antarctica in the south. This is an endangered plant of the Juan Fernandez Islands, around 400 miles off the Pacific coast of Chile. Two hummingbirds feed at these flowers. The Juan Fernandez fire crown, an endangered relative of this bird, will be seen at the end of the program. In the north of Chile is the Atacama Desert, the driest desert in the world. Some places there have never seen rain. This hummingbird lives along rivers that descend from the Andes through the desert. This is a female oasis hummingbird. The flowers are lantana. You will now see two nests in different stages. In this one, two young have recently hatched. At the older nest, one of the young birds has already moved to a nearby branch. 
The second is still in the nest, nearly out of view. The young bird exercises its wings, getting ready to fly. By the next morning, the fledgling has flown about 20 feet to a thin perch, too flimsy for the mother. hummingbirds we will see now all live in the southern highlands of Guatemala. This hummingbird is a rare visitor to Arizona. It's a windy day in the cloud forest. This bird is related to the bumblebee hummingbird of Mexico, but its song is very different. The green violet ear usually suspends her nest from rootlets or small vines. This species is related to the blue-throated hummingbird of Arizona. This will be at half speed, but even at full speed, Wood stars seem to float from flower to flower. Like many hummingbirds, the sparkling-tailed wood star is named after the male. This was the final country for the year 2000. We'll see four species from Panama 
and then finish the program with some rare and endangered hummingbirds. flower is an aracad, probably Cavendishia. Like many North American hummers, she has camouflaged her nest with bits of plant material. Have you ever seen a hummingbird make a mistake? This was hummingbird number 200 for the year 2000. It occurs only on a few mountain tops in Panama and northwestern Colombia. This species is typical of many hummingbirds in that their small ranges make them vulnerable to changes in the environment. We will end the program with seven rare and endangered hummingbirds from around the Americas. The beautiful hyacinth visor bear is found only in small areas of central Minas Gerais, a state in eastern Brazil. The even rarer hooded visor bearer is called by local people Beja Flor de Cravacinha, which means flower kisser with the little bow tie. This hermit lives in rainforests along the Atlantic coast of Brazil. Less than 5% of the original forest there still exists. mangrove hummingbird feeds on these flowers. The coastal habitat of these mangroves is disappearing. This is a young male. This hummer was nearly wiped out on Tobago by a hurricane in 1963. It's slowly making a comeback. This incredible bird is known only from the east bank of a river in northern Peru. No one knows how many still exist. At first glance it looks like a hummingbird being followed by two large bees.
This Juan Fernandez fire crown is catching insects over a stream on Robinson Crusoe Island. This is perhaps the most endangered of all the hummingbirds. Only a few hundred are left. The male and female are so different that when they were discovered in the 19th century, they were thought to be two different species. The male weighs 50% more than the female and looks entirely different. What we have been looking at is the female. This is the male. Whenever the female appears at the stream to catch insects, the male follows. He's more interested in courting her than in catching bugs. In these final scenes, you will see the male flutter his wings and fan his tail in a courtship display and hear him call and sing to the female. <laughs>